Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Fragile Things, Short Fictions and Wonders by Neil Gaiman. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go and check out some of my tabs before I share the overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, the blurb. Dane reads. Let me tell you a story. No, wait, one's not enough. I'll begin again. Let me tell you stories of the months of the year, of ghosts and heartbreak, of dread and desire, of after hours drinking and unanswered phones, of good deeds and bad days, of trusting wolves and how to talk to girls. There are stories within stories, whispered in the quiet of the night, shouted above the roar of the day, and played out between lovers and enemies, strangers and friends. But all, all are fragile things made of just 26 letters arranged and rearranged to form tales and imaginings which will dazzle your senses, haunt your imagination, and move you to the very depths of your soul. So, right off the bat, I don't actually have a huge amount to say, because Neil Gaiman is one of those authors where sometimes I love his stuff, sometimes I hate it, sometimes I'm kind of indifferent. This is one of the more indifferent ones, um, probably not the best short story collection I've read even like this, this quarter, so uh, it was okay, anyway. Um, we get a reference to wool gathering right at the beginning in a retelling of Sherlock Holmes, which kind of annoyed me a bit because I'm not, I'm not a fan of retellings, so... <laughs> Which might be why I don't tend to get on well with um, Neil Gaiman, but I did enjoy the reference to wall gathering because it made me think of Charlie Heathcote here on BookTube. Uh, we get the phrase chacun a son goût uh, used a few times, which means eat, which means each to his own taste uh, from the French. So as I'm learning French, it was interesting to see that out in the wild. And here is uh, one of his characters is talking about London, and I just thought this was quite apt. He says. Actually, that makes it sound like I like the place, and frankly, I don't. It's too transient. Things come and go, and people come and go too damn fast. I'm not a romantic man, but give me south of the river or the east end any day. The east end is a proper place. It's where things begin, good and bad. It's the cunt and the arsehole of London. They're always close together. Where Azul's court is, I don't know what. The body analogy breaks down completely when you get out to there. I think that's because London is mad. Multiple personality problems, all these little towns and villages that grew and crashed into each other to make one big city but never forgot their old borders. So here's somebody talking about cats, uh, and the cat, I guess, it's kind of a bad guy. So it's not really a bad cat, it's just part of this spooky stuff that's going on. And we all know how I feel about cats, my cat is currently out there. So we get, I was never much of a one for cats, he said suddenly, not really. I like dogs, big faithful things, you know where you were with a dog. You knew where you were with a dog, not cats. Go off for days on end, you don't see them. When I was a lad, we had a cat, it was called Ginger. There was a family down the street, they had a cat they called Marmalade. Turned out it was the same cat getting fed by all of us. Well, I mean, sneaky little buggers, you can't trust them. You're getting fed by the neighbours, Biggie. Uh, there's a story called uh, How to Talk to Girls at Parties, and there's just one line I particularly liked. Kitchens are good at parties, you never need an excuse to be there, and on the good side, at this party, I couldn't see any signs of someone's mum. I inspected the various bottles and cans on the kitchen table. Then I poured half an inch of Perno into the bottom of my plastic cup, which I filled to the top with Coke. I dropped in a couple of ice cubes and took a sip, relishing the sweet shop tang of the drink. And um, turns out he only drinks Perno because he heard someone ask for it on a live EP by the Velvet Underground. And I'm not sure about the maths on this because I thought there were more Beatles breeds than this. But anyway, Beatles, said Professor Mandalay. I once calculated that if a man such as myself were to eat six different species of beetle each day, it would take him more than 20 years to eat every beetle that has been identified. And over that 20 years, enough new species of beetle might have been discovered to keep him eating for another five years. And in those five years, enough beetles might have been discovered to keep him eating for another two and a half years, and so on and so on. It's a paradox of inexhaustibility. I call it Mandalay's beetle. You would have to enjoy eating beetles, though, he added, or it would be a very bad thing indeed. I prefer John. Not to eat though, I'm vegetarian. Well, I'm vegan, I don't know why I said I'm veggie. Been a while since I was, since I was veggie. And another thing, I'm not sure the maths on this either. Uh, Professor Mandalay said, the Earth is at its closest 91 million miles from the sun. The fastest dive by a bird ever recorded is that of the peregrine falcon at 273 miles per hour. Flying at that speed from the sun, it would take a bird a little over 38 years to reach us. If it could fly through the darkened vacuum of space, of course. That seems not very long at like such a low speed relative to the speed of space travel, you know? And then we get um, a novella that's part of like a, a time with American gods. And there are a few good things I tab from this and this was definitely the best part of it. Uh, so we get, if this is how the Scots treat their summers, thought Shadow, remembering something Oscar Wilde had once said, they don't deserve to have any. And then we get this, uh, so how do I pronounce your name, asked Smith? Boulder or Boulder or something else? Like Chumley is actually pronounced Chumley, which obviously I have my character in my novel Chumley and nobody pronounces it right. Uh, they get a reference to doing a Sunday People. Our reporters made his excuses and left. So I'm gonna do a Sunday People when I'm at public outings that I, and I just wanna go home. And then we get, uh, sh 
Uh, we get an old man singing to the tune of My Bunny Lies Over the Ocean. I would sing it, but I only know how the opening line of that goes. But my grandpa sells condoms to sailors. He punctures the tips with a pin. My grandma does backstreet abortions. My God, how the money rolls in. And then we get another verse. My brother's a missionary worker. He saves fallen women from sin. For five bucks, he'll save you a redhead. My God, how the money rolls in. So yeah, that's all I have to share from Fragile Things, Short Fictions and Wonders by Neil Gaiman. Overall, i got to say I was a little bit disappointed in it, even though I wasn't necessarily expecting great things because of this sort of weird relationship I have with Gaiman. Uh, overall, I would probably give it a middle of the road, like three out of five. It was just all right. I mean, I'm glad I ticked it off. But I don't, I'd only recommend it if you're a big Neil Gaiman fan. And if you're new to his work, just read American Gods. Don't, don't start with this. So there we have it. That's why I made of Fragile Things by Neil Gaiman. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.